Yo, yo, what's up, everybody? I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. And I'm going to tell you, folks, today I'm going to be reviewing probably the most disturbing book I've ever read. I mean, this book is disgusting. It's Urban Gothic by Brian Keene. Now, if you watched my top 10 most disturbing books I've ever read video. If you haven't watched it, just type that in. Durfee. Type in my last name and then top 10 most disturbing books and the video will magically appear upon your YouTube screen. And it's a great video of me counting down about 20 different books that just disturb the crap out of me. And I'm telling you, this book finished really high on that list. And so I read this back in 2009 when it first came out and it left such a fucking impression on me and I just I, I did that list I did that list and then I thought I gotta reread this because it is just wildly weird and disturbing and so I wanted to do a reread for the channel and leave a review so let's just talk about the um cover itself you know we always talk about the covers first because I love graphic design and cover art and this has got a pretty good sort of horror novel feel to it it's got the font that looks very stephen king horror novelish it's got this haunted house which is representative pretty decent representation of the house that i pictured in the story this is a basically your haunted house type story but set in a urban setting that's why it's called urban gothic um so i give the cover uh you know it's published by leisure leisure books and i give the uh cover a, a, a good grade let's talk about this so it's set in philadelphia in the ghettos of philadelphia a haunted house story set in the ghetto that's okay cool because most haunted house stories we think of as up in Maine, in the in the New England countryside, or just somewhere out in the middle of Kansas, or wherever, you know, the haunted house is up on a hill, you know, and it's just like, you know, creepy and ghoulish, and, you know, like the house in the story It was set in Derry, Maine. This is in the middle of the ghetto, so if you've ever watched the TV series The Wire, this is what we're talking about. Those Baltimore ghettos, those Washington, D.C. ghettos, those Philadelphia ghettos. Okay, six white kids go to a hip-hop rap concert in downtown Philadelphia. They're driving home. They get lost in the ghetto. And they're freaked out. I mean, these kids are just like, they don't belong here. They know they don't belong here. And their car breaks down and they're fixing their car, and some black guys approach them off the street, you know, some street corner guys. And um, they're freaked out. These white kids are incredibly racist. Well, at least a couple of them are, because the black kids just are kind of like, hey, what's going on? What happened to your car? Do you need any help? The white kids are freaked out. They think that everything the black guys are saying is leading up to we're going to mug you and kill you and leave you dead in the gutter because they're racist little kids. They're racist teenagers. And um, one of them, and it's a funny scene, I mean, because the, the black guys are just normally conversing with, with these guys. And we're kind of like, hey, this ain't the neighbor. Uh, literally what they're saying is, guys, it sucks your car broke down. This ain't the neighborhood for your car to break down because clearly you're a bunch of white dudes and this is this is a bad neighborhood. And But the white kids are... I mean, the black kids are actually concerned. And the white kids are taking that concern and the words that are said as, oh, these dudes are going to fuck us up. They're going to fuck us up bad. And so one of the kids, who the racist kid, who's let us know he's racist early on in the book, he, he's like, he just blurts out the N-word, like, oh, my God, the N-word, they're going to kill. And he just runs in a panic. He just sprints down the street in a panic. And that kind of freaks out the other white kids. And those, so they go chasing after. They're like, oh, shit. And they go chasing, oh, shit. He's probably right. We're dead people. And they, they, and they run off. It's a pretty funny scene. And the black kids are just standing there like, well, that was weird. And uh, so the kids, but then the black kids are also like, well, the, those guys are running down to the end of the street. 
that house at the end of the street. Everybody avoids that house, and those kids are headed right towards it. There's no lamps. The house is hidden in shadow. Anyway, the white kids run towards it. Now we'll talk about the white kids for a minute. There's six of them. Carrie and Tyler, they're a couple. Stephanie and Brett, they're a couple. And, and Javier and Heather are also a couple. And they enter this house. Okay, and that, what I've said so far, takes place in about the first 15 pages. This, so this book really starts out with a bang. So 15 pages in, shit hits the fan real quick. Because as soon as they walk into that house, as soon as they go into that house to hide, because they think to themselves, it's dark down here, we got to hide from these hoodlums, they, they won't even notice that we went in the house, and we'll just wait. We'll wait it out in this house. It looks abandoned. Every other house on this street, it's a ghetto. They look like they're lived in. This one looks abandoned. We'll hide here. As soon as they enter the door and close the door behind them, oh, my God, it is, it goes so fucking sideways so fast because that house is full of monstrous fucking carnival freaks that you can't even imagine. I mean, it is full of just monsters, giants and midgets and Vikings and, and um, people wearing skin suits and, and skulls and dead bodies and weird tilting. I mean, it is just, you, you have entered a horror, a clockwork fun house from hell from the moment they close that door. There's no like subtle wandering around the house and creepy things go off in the darkness and there's a little few scares here and the tension builds slowly and like a crackhead runs across the balcony here and scares them or, or a crackhead jumps down. No, there's, it is, there's none of that build up like the typical haunted house where they're just kind of like walking through the corridors like, ooh, where the hell are we? Ooh, no, it is like, the moment they enter the house and close the door, it is like fucking game on. It is like just like that. And it, and it is so outlandishly grotesque in every way possible. And it just goes from one freak show of a room to another freak show of a hallway to another freak show of a staircase to another freak show of a basement to another freak show of an attic and 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 as these people are being chased through this house and i'm telling you they do not laugh they're death about death there's six of these teenagers i'm not going to tell you how many survived the first half second in the house but it ain't all six and then i won't tell you how many survived till the end well here's the thing the fun part of this book isn't just the house and these six white teenagers it's the black guys too now the hood the people that the white kids thought were hoodlums their true story was they were literally concerned about these kids getting lost in the ghetto they they literally were like they're they were literally saying Dudes, this ain't the best place to for you to be broke down. And they were there's they were gonna actually help them. They were actually going to they and plus not only that, but they were gonna help their buddy, because their buddy owned an auto mechanic shop just around the corner, and they were gonna just take him over there, you know? Like, hey, we we'll get you fixed up. Hey, we got we'll get you fixed up. And and then they were kind of hinting at that too, which was sort of freaking out the white kids is like well, we'll take you around the corner kind of a thing. And, and the white kids were like, going around a corner with these guys doesn't sound like a good idea. I mean, you, you, you get what I'm saying. So it was a, a conversation that had so many double meanings that, and, and so many misinterpretations by the white kids that they fled down the street to this house of horrors. And even the black kids know, don't go near that house. And so they see the white kids flee towards that house and they're like, oh shit. So now they're in a dilemma. They're like, we were trying to help these guys and these motherfuckers took off to the worst part of the neighborhood because they know that there's weird stuff in that house. Now, they don't know how weird it is. They don't realize like it's a carnival fun house full of horrors. And uh, so they're like, well, we, we should probably go get them. And so they do the noble thing and they go to uh, help the kids in the house because they know. And so now not only do we have the 
original six white kids enter the house. Now we've got these black guys going into the house to help the white kids out. Well, you, now we've got a whole bunch of people in this house. And not only that, but there's a there's an old couple that lives on the street that sees these people going into this house and they're like, the old man and old woman are like, hey, no, don't know if those kids, we don't know if them kids should be going in the house. The house has got a reputation. I don't know if that's a good idea, Mildred. There's a bunch of kids headed to that house. And that, and so now we've got the, they, so they, so, so anyway, the police, they show up and they decide to investigate the house. So now we got Popo going into the house. And this, and every time people enter this house, every time they enter this house, it, like I said, it ain't no slow burn. It ain't no like, ooh, this is kind of creepy. It is like, as soon as they enter the house, it's like fucking game on. It's like fucking, fucking weird ass sexual torture, fucking bloody, grotesque limbs flying everywhere, heads getting squashed, just wackadoo, nonstop, relentless. Uh, oh my gosh, it's just, it just, my only criticism of this book is that it's so short. It's only like 250 pages. And I'm like, I would have rather this thing, I would have, we get very brief character sketches of each character. And I would have like, kind of like that, and maybe that's, maybe I'm wrong. I'm probably wrong. Maybe the reason this is such a hard hitting book is we just get brief glimpse of, glimpses of who these characters are before shit starts to happen. Because shit starts to happen right from the get go. And I guess if we would have taken the Stephen King route or my route and just gotten to know every single character and every detail of that character's life before they entered the house, well, we would have read 300 pages of the character's before we get into the house. And maybe this is so powerful because it does just open up with just such graphic horror right at the beginning. Loved that. Uh, so my one criticism is I would have liked to have seen more. But maybe less is more. Maybe the reason this has such an impact on me is because less is more. When it comes to character development, that is. Now, when it comes to blood, guts, violence, and uh, just creepiness, this has every page. More is more, as far as that goes. I mean, this just doesn't let up. This is relentless. Non-stop. Just around every corner is something more grotesque. And shocking. And bizarre. And weird. Disturbing. Grotesque. Horrifying. Anyway, so I give this, I'm going to give this a 9.5 out of 10. I'm dropping it just by a little bit just because um, I want to, I love, I love Stephen King it-sized books. <laughs> this is, this is, anyway, 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 read this and then vomit in your toilet because it's gross.